One is about uh, drawing. Um, I just want to remind you on the last day, but carry, you can have carryover, um, about uh, the uh, power of drawing. Over there is the Van Gogh book, which is such a inspiring book that you can, I mean, I, every time I sit down with it, I'm sitting down for about three hours. Just the miracle of his uh, change of stroke and how, what I call, how he gets color, even if it, as they often are in the sepia, um, the, uh, and in here there are other things that are not straight drawing, but mm. color is obtained by what uh, goes on the page in terms of a mark, a mark. Um, it can be color, color, paint, paint. It can be Cross hatching, it can be a uh, very uh, stroke as he exemplifies, which I think is just um, inspiring. And it's a different way of getting value on, on the paper. It also is very, um, very personal, and you, and you get the feeling of, of the mark of the person. I mean, the kind of thing we've talked about the impulse of the brush, the stroke, the salient mark. And I don't think one can think about this enough. So. Um, to the extent that also think, maybe make yourself a task every once in a while, not, not necessarily today, but to, I, to emphasize your drawing, um, either as the underpinning and, and say, you know, this, these marks have as much of integrity as, as the paint that, you know, theoretically we watercolor painters want to be using. Um, so think about that both as the underpinning and it's not overpinning, <laughs> overgirding. What's the word? Um, anyway, <clears throat> coming back with lines sometimes. I mean, that may not suit certain people ever to do that. I mean, it may be more, ah, I do not want to put mark back on my beautiful washes. Fine. You don't necessarily have to be doing, um, you know, added ink line. You could be um, simply using different stroke with wash and different, um, when we talk about accents in, in painting, or we were just looking at Connie painting, and talking about, you know, does that does it need more darks, which I would think is one of the most common fix and finish things that people come up with. I think I need some more darks, or, or you know, another value in there. That, that often can be just a repeated stroke with paint, and you're doing an overlay. Overlay, that's a word, isn't it? Yes. Okay. But it also comes from underneath. Um, I wanted to just then say one other thing. By the way, I don't often bring in this book because it's so heavy. Um, but this is Neil Welliver, and I don't know if you're all familiar with him. Um, died fairly recently, a Maine artist that we taught in Pennsylvania, um, and we lived both places. Um, huge uh, landscapes. I mean, like. Nine. What what in oil? In fact, these are watercolor. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I. Th th these are not eight feet. These are uh, thirty by thirty. Uh, he often works in square form. And he is full of marks. And in this book, um, which if you choose to look into it, um, uh, you can find a straight drawing. Here's a straight drawing. Um, sketch. Let me see. More before I get up. Here, for example. Um, this is uh, Study for Night Sky. Um, it's both very line, liney and very line, and it's full of areas, which actually you can find a picture if you develop that into something. It's almost like, I, I don't want to say paint my numbers because then you're not going to like this, sorry. Um, and you don't have to like them. Um, though I think he's a very interesting painter. But these are very much filled in, very, he has a printmaker's mentality too. So I brought him in, and if you are not familiar, take a look, um, drawing, 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 and then huge, huge um, uh, oils, 96 by 96. He often used that format, um, partly, because he wanted to people to feel that's the scale that you literally feel you can walk into a painting. Um,
an important concept that we don't often use in watercolor. Um, okay, now briefly, I put groupings over here of um, things I don't I don't want to call them um, uh, studies, renditions, realizations, or whatever. But the the differences between in the groupings. I'll just start with this one, uh, which is the theme in each one of these is rocks. This is the rocks from Fort Smith, where some of you were, where it's plein air. Um, this is John Ruskin, oh, I, of course. And this is somebody you may not know, Bernard Shape, um, who uh, a Massachusetts artist. Is that C H A E T? Exactly. I love this stuff. I it was but just... I never knew it was pronounced that way. Well, it, I'm pretty sure it's shape, but it could be shite. I don't think so. I think it's shape. Um, uh, take a look at these. The reason I'm putting these groupings this is rocks, this is trees, this is weeds, this is gardens. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is shell. Well, this isn't, sorry. <laughs> Shells. Um, in different forms, and this is elaborate, elaborated gardens. Um, it is to say that this is basically what we're doing every time we paint. We are converting from something, sometimes people use photographs, sometimes they are out in the woods, whatever. Um, he did a lot of plein air, by the way, believe it or not, that he's a plein air painting, though he finished a lot in the studio, um, and a lot in frozen ice snow. Um, <clears throat> you have your, uh, the inspiration, um, trees here, uh, and then you do something with it. Um, the, 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 these trees, all of these, do we need a quiz here? No. <laughs> Who's that? The color is so characteristic. Go again. Go again. Deborah, what is that thing up the top? This is the wonderful thing of a woman I know, and some of you may remember Sue Fierston, who took my class years ago, um, and is doing all sorts of, always did these wonderfully quirky things. It's an ancient, um, I think it was some kind of a microscope, from the, from the um, what do you call it, museum here, NIH or something, there's a medical instrument. Uh -huh. Anyway, she did a series on the, um, I just put that in, it's another interpretive thing. Um, and you go from the trees, and Gauguin could have been looking at something similar to this. I always think it's important to remember this, that you look at this, or this, or a tree, and you convert it into something of, of your statement. And it can be radical like this, where you exaggerate one color. I mean, this probably was, could have been pretty dreary, what he was looking at. Um, this is Monet, which I think is amazing. It doesn't look like one. I never would have known one. Um, and that's Hiroshige. And this is uh, Van Gogh. Um, so it's what you do. And what you do is put, what format you put into it. Um, do you do the whole thing? Do you look at it up? at it or down at it? Do you look through a framing device? See? Very, these are the same kind of thing. So these are all just to remind you of what a painter is doing and, and why, and, and there are the, many of the whys to it. Um, the weeds thing, again, the same. You know, at what point is, and we talked a lot about this before with the botanical, what point does it go from a botanical, a rendition just to be a, um, tell you this is such and such grass. This is Japanese, actually. Um, and then, tip, 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 it becomes a painting. Why is that a painting? Or that a painting? Or aren't they? You know, I mean, you know, and not, it's not just a rendition to say this is what um, that dandelions look like in these different stages. This is Milay, um, Van Gogh. Uh, and gardens, by the similarity in these is fascinating to me because mm -hmm. they're very different. Carolyn Brady, who some of you, if you didn't know her before, worked huge. These are enormous, uh, 66 and a half by 44 and a half uh, watercolor. 
water. Uh, anyway, you could see that these are all interpretations that come out of congested gardens, you know, with changes of color. Some of them are more flattened and just a sort of patterning, they, they, and the patterning is what comes out. So all those things are part of your tools to make your own painting. 